Welcome everyone to this let's play of Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3, also known as Turbocharged. Now we're here in Mission Control with Gene Kerman uh, to pick up some contracts. And I have spotted not one, not two, not even three, but four contracts that we can do in the next few episodes. Uh, and the first of those is a nice easy one to test the RT-5 Flea solid fuel booster at the launch site. Always a bit of a gimme, these at a launch site uh, contracts. So we'll do uh, that one. Doesn't give us very much, uh, only uh, 4,500 funds and one science and one reputation. But the sooner we do it, the sooner we'll get a different contract to replace it. Uh, right below it, we have test the TR-38D at the launch site. Again, it doesn't give us very much in terms of reward, but it is a gimme, uh, so we can do that at the launch site. But then comes the meat of our next few episodes, and that is relating to the MUN. Uh, we have been asked by Kerbin World First Record Keeping Society to go on an orbital spacewalk uh, near the Mun. Uh, we can't actually fail this one because at some point we will do this. Uh, so uh, we will get 45,798 funds for science and nine reputation. Uh, so we will be doing uh, that one. And finally, plant a flag on the Mun. Uh, this has been given to us by uh, Umbra Space Industries. Uh, we can fail to put the uh, flag on the Mun, but I assure you we won't. Uh, it will give us uh, a handy 1,000, uh, 1,000, uh, 125,000 in funds and 13 reputation. Always good to have that reputation. But I've decided that whilst we could do those on a shoestring, we won't. We will doing them in the luxury that is uh, suitable for our Kerbals. Uh, and we'll see how to do that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and uh, accept all of these contracts and head on over to the VAB to do the simple launch site contracts. See you in a moment. So these at a launch site uh, contracts are always very, very easy to do. So uh, there's no excuse not for doing them. Uh, the first part is to pick ourselves a can or probe core. We'll just pick this uh, particular can uh, just because we can. Uh, and then we just need to attach our testable parts. Uh, so let's get the uh, flea solid fuel booster and put that on the bottom. Now in order to test it we don't actually need any fuel. We don't actually need to go anywhere. Uh, we just need to stage the part. So uh, we'll take all the fuel out of it. Uh, Next, we need to go and get uh, we need to go and get the separator. That'll be under structural, and there it is highlighted in this sort of light blue color uh, because we don't actually own it yet through uh, the science and research facility. So let's pick that and drop it there on the top. A rather awkward-looking craft, but perfectly functional for the purposes of our test. Uh, so to test the flea. Uh, booster. We have to perform the test by activating the part through staging. Uh, and similarly uh, for the TR-38D to activate that uh, through staging. So we have our two stages. doesn't really matter what order they are in. Uh, normally we would probably order them this way around. But it doesn't actually matter because we're not actually going anywhere. Uh, so uh, let's pop on out to the launch pad and complete these easy tests. Well, we're out here on the launch pad with Jeb, ready to do our contract. So let's get the contract window up. Uh, there are our two MUN-related ones, and these are the two that we're going to do here at the launch pad. So all that remains is for us to stage uh, the flea. Let's do that. Uh, that has now been successful. Like I say, we don't actually have to go anywhere. We just have to stage it. Uh, and the same is true for the TR. 8D. So let's stage that as well. Bit of a shock there for Jeb, but he seems happy enough. So that's both of those contracts done. So let's just review uh, the notifications uh, that we got. So there's our test complete for the TR38D, uh, 4,725 uh, funds. So let's uh, bin that notification 
and also for the test of the flea, four and a half thousand funds. So that was uh, relatively simple and straightforward for Jeb on this lovely sunny morning. But now we really do have some hard work to do, which is to build this luxury liner to take us to the Mun. So let's get cracking with that. I thought for comparison, it wouldn't go amiss to bring out of the hangar the Minmus bus. Uh, this is what took our uh, heroic Kerbals to Minmus uh, not so long ago. Uh, and it's perfectly functional. Um, it would do uh, the job uh, that we were after to go to the Mun, but it is a bit uh, stark. It's not exactly, um, well, how can we say, uh, luxury uh, transport to get anybody to the Mun. So I thought we would do something similar but better uh, that would take uh, quite a few more Kerbals uh, anywhere we wanted to go pretty much within the Kerbin system and potentially elsewhere as well. So let's uh, start a new craft. Um, it's going to be very similar uh, in its basic concepts uh, to the Minmus bus. So we're going to start off uh, with, uh, we're going to start off here with uh, a Coppola module. Uh, then I thought, let's go under control and we'll put one of those reaction wheels. And I'm not one for uh, aesthetics particularly, we can see that in the Minmus bus, but I do think we ought to try uh, in particular for this uh, vehicle. So I'm just going to put uh, one of those adapters under there. Uh, next we will have a fuel tank and we'll see how this is going to play out in just a few minutes. Uh, another adapter fuel tank. So this is going to be our uh, engine section for transfer and landing at the month. So that's going to be the sort of basic structure, the basic skeleton uh, of our craft. Doesn't look much yet, but this is where the luxury is going to come in. I'm going to pick a couple of these advanced nose cones. Now there aren't many parts uh, that will fit to the side of something, but these nose cones are such parts. So I'm just going to put four of these on equidistant around the door there. Uh, and uh, to these I'm going to attach from, is it the utility section? I can never, I can never find these, uh, these parts. Uh, where are they? Ah, there we go. Uh, the Mark 1 crew cabin. So let's just put that under there. And I'm just going to show you, I'm probably going to have to undo this, but I'm just going to show you roughly what we're going to do. So let's squeeze these right in until there we go. So that's roughly what we're going to do. I'm probably going to do it a little bit, uh, a little bit prettier than that, perhaps. Uh, maybe move it up a little bit. There we go. Get ourselves uh, a little bit of um, clearance there. Um, let's rotate these. The reason I might have to undo it. I just reselect. Uh, Part that we need. The, re the reason I might have to redo this is fitting all these parts together whilst these parts are so tightly pushed into the main body of the craft. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need uh, some life support. Probably not these tiny ones because this is going to be nine Kerbals. Uh, so we're probably going to need some of these larger tanks. I mean, there's fertilizer. Tank. What I want is life support. So uh, where are we going to get the larger life support? Let's just do life uh, and see if we can search for them. There we go. Life support 3, 2.5, 1.25. So let's stick four of those underneath. So that gives us some life support. We're probably going to need some batteries. So let's have a look for round batteries. Here we go. These round batteries. Squeeze those under there. And now you can see the slight problem we might have squeezing the adapters in underneath. So this might mean we have to undo some of our good work higher up. But let's just have a go. So let's get another couple of these nose cones, just reverse them around. And I can't get them to snap. So uh, let's move these parts back out. There we go. Snap these back underneath. There we go. I'm going to have to rotate them so they're rotated the right way. So let's rotate them 
in towards the body. So no, that's out. So let's go all the way around. There we go. So that's in towards the body. And then let's go back to snapping them back in. Oh, <laughs> I've rotated those as well. Never mind. Uh, let's see. In you go. There we go. Is that uh, better but not best? Um, what can I do? I know what we'll do. So let's take these off the bottom here. What I want to do is rotate these windows so they're facing directly outwards so our passengers get the best view and if I'm lucky I should be able to snap there we go snap those back in like so so again that gives us our luxury cabin so again this is more or less uh, the accommodation uh, completed but obviously there's plenty still to go uh, we are going to need uh, a few other parts to make this fully functional uh, the first thing I thought we'd do is we will get oh we've got the batteries here let's get another battery here on top because I will be worried about running out of battery power if we're ever on the dark side of Kerbin or the Mun uh, next let's get a docking port here on top and for some reason the uh, light up docking ports are not appearing uh, as a docking part. Their metadata obviously doesn't connect, contain the word docking. Uh, so let's just have, uh, probably under utility I guess, so let's have a look. Uh, parachutes, we will need to come back to parachutes, back to light up, uh, light up panels, um, some panels for uh, electricity. Where are we? That's the bottom of oh, God, I'm getting science. So maybe they're under colonization or EVA items. Let's have a look. Colonization, here we go. Let's have a look under here. This is where most of the USI parts are. There we are. Uh, Kerber Trail docking port. So that's the light up docking port we've been using on the Minmus station. So that should give us uh, the opportunity to dock to stations like Minmus 1 in the future. Uh, but let's start working top down. We do want some um, panels, so we will be wanting some of our panels. And we are going to be uh, landing this craft back on Kerbin, uh, all things being equal. So I'm going to use a couple of these panels. I'm actually going to use uh, four of them. So let's get four of these panels. Uh, is that? No, it's not quite even. So let's move them around one stop. There we go, so that gives us four of those panels. Uh, the only other thing we are going to have to worry about uh, is parachutes. And I'm, going to worry, I'm worrying a little bit that I'm not going to be actually going to be able to place uh, sufficient parachutes. Let's put the parachutes on first. So we'll go for the usual radial mount parachutes. And I'm actually going to squeeze on an awful lot of parachutes. There's eight parachutes. Although might be better to put on what's that six and then squeeze in other parts around them that's probably quite a good idea so let's try putting these on as pairs radially uh, so that should be two there we go there's two one there and one there so I just pressed R to get these to go into radial symmetry uh, let's go back and get another set oh, another set of those panels uh, which ones are we using? We're using those. So again, uh, another pair of those panels. Are they lined up? Yeah, pretty much. So that's four panels in total. I know these little sort of brackets poke through, but we'll just uh, we'll just take that as cosmetic. Uh, that's not really clipping as such. So that's given us six. Do you reckon six will be enough? That's six um, parachutes and. We've got four solar panels, that should be fine. Uh, next we'll go for a little bit of control. Uh, we've already got our main reaction wheel, but we want to put on uh, just one uh, of these um, KOS modules. So let's get that, just put one of those. There we go, that way round perhaps. There we go. Uh, and that leaves a space for an antenna. Uh, antenna. 
Uh, so we'll put one of these communitrons just here for uh, local communication. Can we switch that in there? Nope, not quite. Let's try placing that without. There we go. And let's go back and put our. Uh, there we go. Our Compo Max radial tubeless on second. There we go. There, that fits in quite neatly. The uh, antenna there. Um, in this little cutout here, so that works fine. Obviously, this would only be antenna suitable for uh, local transmissions. So let's get uh, here we go a Communitron eighty eight eighty eight, uh, and perhaps uh, place that. Uh, where should we place that? Um, place that there. We can use that for longer range uh, transmission. We've only got one. Yeah, we've only got the one. Uh, so next, uh, seeing as we're talking about uh, these various control. Uh, surfaces, uh, surfaces, control devices. Let's get ourselves uh, a Kerbal engineering system, and I'm going to sort of cheat uh, and squeeze that right in there. So that's uh, squeezed in just uh, below uh, the docking port there. Uh, so that's that. So uh, working our way down, we could probably do with uh, we can probably do with some illumination. Uh, or lighting to everybody else. We've got these Mark II illuminators, which are relatively uh, pale, or we could go for the much brighter ones. Let's go for the much brighter ones, and we will squeeze four of those in up here. So that's going to be quite a bright area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it a little bit further down. I'm then going to use the rotate tool just to point it a little more down towards the ground. Perhaps we'll have to take the snap off and just rotate it a little bit further down so we get uh, more light where we are uh, actually intending to land. And I don't particularly want these burning up on re-entry, so I am going to just snap them a little bit into the body. Uh, in the hope that um, we will get uh, less heating. What do you reckon? Do you think that's going to be okay? It looks all right. Yeah, it, it looks okay. It looks okay. Um, let's go back to uh, place mode. Um, so what do we need next? We've got some lighting uh, down. The light up docking port should give us light uh, up from the uh, Capola module. Uh, so that's uh, fair enough. Uh, next, perhaps, uh, we need uh, landing legs and ladders. So let's go for landing first. Uh, these are the larger, most robust landing uh, struts that we've got uh, so far. So let's uh, put the snap back on and snap four of these as low down as we can get them. So that's just below the length of the engine. So hopefully if we land on a relatively flat surface, even if it's sloping, uh, we should have some clearance there at the bottom uh, for the engine. Uh, and just as I said, we'll probably need uh, a ladder. Uh, so let's see what we've got in the way of ladders. We've got this uh, mobility enhancer, which we will use, we only need the one of them, uh, which we will use up here at the top. Let's just see how far that extends. Um, so that extends all the way to under there. Okay, well, let's bring it down there. And what we're going to do um, is we're going to have to perhaps use two. So if we bring this down to perhaps here and then a second one here. So let's see how far does that go. That's still not quite all the way down to the MUN's surface. There we go. How far do we need to bring this one down to match it? Only really bring it to there. Okay, well we can fill the gap with one of these uh, mobility enhancers. There we go. So let's put that in there. So that'll give us a uh, ladder all the way uh, up to... Let's bring that up just a little bit. Uh, that'll give us a ladder all the way up to um, the capsule right there at the top. Uh, and then entry to these cabins will obviously have to be through the Capola module. Uh, means there might be a bit of shuffling around because there's only room for one Kerbal in the uh, Capola module. So that's going to be a little bit awkward, but never mind. 
Uh, so that is ladders. Uh, so let's retract that one and retract that one. Hopefully they won't explode in the event of re-entry. Hopefully there will be some re-entry. Uh, that would be a bit of a loss if we lost nine Kerbals, each of these taking two plus the one here. That'd be nine Kerbals stranded in space. Right, what next? We've got parachutes. Um, probably not enough, but we have parachutes. Um, what else? We've got lighting. Uh, we haven't got uh, some of our can't do without panels, can't do without solar panels. So let's just go and have a couple of those. We do have the larger ones, but I don't really have sort of some hidey holes to hide them away in. So what I think we'll do um, is we'll just get a pair of these for emergencies. Let's just put uh, one of these on either side. So there should be one here as well. There we go. So we've got two of those. Uh, so those will give us some possibility of lighting or at least charging our lights, charging our batteries, uh, even if we forget to put out the other panels. Uh, what next? Well, we do have this docking port at the top, so we really ought to do uh, some docking next. Now, we do have some of these fuel tanks. Uh, so these are the small and the larger tank. Uh, so we could put one of those in here. So how much is that? That's 250. Uh, we have some of the cylindrical ones, which are 150 each. We could use several of those. Or we could use, I kind of like using four of these. That will give us 240, which is about the same as one of those. And we've got this cunning little gap right down here that we could squeeze them into. So let's just drop them in there. So that hides those away without them being um, clipped um, too much into the various tanks. So that clips those away. Uh, so that's good. Let's just bring up our, uh, there we go, bring up our landing legs. And now let's use the um, RCS build aid just to place our ports. Now before we do that, I'm going to assume that we've used up pretty much all of our fuel by the time that we're going to need to do any docking. So that'll just make it a little bit uh, more accurate. Now we do have to find a place to put our, probably not right inside our landing uh, landing legs, our struts, our struts, come on blimey, uh, right in place of our mobility enhancer. Let's get uh, four there and another four here and just look at, uh, well that's actually not so bad. Um, that's one kilonewton uh, of uh, rotational movement. And if we come this way, we can reduce it somewhat. Down to, there we go. Look up there on the top left, the torque is the turning force that's being applied. Uh, whilst trying to translate sideways. So I'm just gonna bring that down, there we go. Uh, to uh, 0 0.011 kilonewtons. That's much, much better. I know we've got a little bit of clipping there. So we, should we move those uh, somewhere else? Uh, should we have four of them maybe? Let's put four of them on there and just hope they don't explode during uh, me. <laughs> I'm just saying, hopefully they won't explode during me. I wonder, here's a test. Why don't we slip them just here over the top of the landing legs? I wonder if the landing legs do provide aerodynamic uh, shielding or uh, just uh, protect our panels there perhaps perhaps not don't know don't know we'll soon find out uh, so we've got here our uh, RCS thruster blocks uh, we can see where our dry and wet center of mass would be I uh, shown here by the red and the yellow markers in the center so uh, that is translating left right forward back because uh, our ship is almost perfectly um, symmetrical. There shouldn't be any significant difference in uh, the force being applied. I know we have some slight difference because we have uh, this here on this side, we have the Kerbal Engineering System, and obviously we have slightly different components to balance them. So there will be some uh, slight difference, uh, but uh, it looks like um, our uh, imbalance is pretty 
manageable. Certainly got this very large uh, reaction wield in here. I'm sure we should be okay. Uh, so that is going to give us our um, RCS and docking. Uh, I think next we should have a look at putting on a little bit of science. Uh, so before we do that, uh, let's put uh, Mun Luxury. Uh, what have we do? Uh, Mun Lander. Let's just put the Mun Lander in here. Uh, we can put the uh, Mun Lander and Luxury parts when we've assembled the whole vehicle. Uh, so uh, now we've done that. Let's look. Like, like I was saying, let's go and have a look at the science parts. Where's science? Here we go. Science. Let's get rid of the RCS filter. Here are all the science parts we can squeeze on. So uh, let's squeeze those on in or around. We only want one of those. So let's squeeze. Where can we squeeze that in? Can we squeeze that in next to the ladder. What else have we got? Let's have a look down here. Uh, atmospheric uh, fluid spectrobarometer. Uh, warranty if void when uh, exposed to air. Yeah. Uh, so um, scans of surrounding atmosphere won't have much atmosphere on. Um, uh, we won't have much atmosphere on the Mun. We might have on Juna, so that might be useful one for Juna. Got uh, anonymous, uh, anonymous, anonymous signal sensor. Can't get my words out. That's the one I can't say. Uh, that is looking for anom anom anomalies. Cool, blimey. Uh, so maybe we'll skip that part. <laughs> uh, asteroid sounding experiment. Uh, probably parts uh, for asteroids, better used on asteroids. Uh, we do have our chem cam, uh, but there's not really anywhere to put it, uh, anywhere safe to put it on this vehicle, uh, particularly if we're intending to bring it back through the atmosphere. Uh, so we won't be using uh, that one, but there must be some other parts that we can use down here somewhere. Uh, let's have a look. What have we got? Um, we've got, oh, here we go. Uh, we've got Kerbo Core Drill uh, for taking uh, ground uh, samples. Again, there's not really much place I can hide this uh, that won't suffer on re entry. I'm looking for some small parts that won't suffer uh, during re entry. Here's one. We can do the uh, Grab Map Negative Gravioli Detector. So, again, we can squeeze one of those in there next to uh, the ladder. Um, what else do we have? Uh, must have other parts. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, those go through all our containers. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be using a uh, liquid fuel booster to do any testing uh, with. Um, what else? We've got uh, the magnetometer boom. We must be able to squeeze the magnetometer boom in here somewhere. Should we uh, squeeze it in there? Uh, let's squeeze that in there. What I might do uh, though is just squeeze it in to the body just a little bit. There we go. Is that? Yeah, that's still sticking out. That's fine. That's not too too much clipped in. There we go. That'll be fine. Uh, so that's uh, that magnetometer boom. So you can say magnetometer. Um, so uh, that's all okay. So we've got that. What other science experiments can we find? We've got uh, the mystery goo containment unit. We can probably we squeeze those in. If we squeeze a couple of those in, let's extend the ladder. Can we squeeze a couple of these in beneath the ladder? So if we put one there, yeah, that's okay. Uh, and so they're not clipping into each other. We'll plant the other one immediately below it, and we'll put some other experiments perhaps uh, down this side if we can find any other small experiments. So we've got uh, orbital telescope. Now that will probably be quite good up here, squeezed in, uh, perhaps put this on the back here, and that's going to uh, rather obliterate one of our, I'll tell you what we'll do, let's put it on there, put it on there and then we'll rotate it, like so, and it can appear um, that the whoever's using the Coppola module is using uh, that device. So yeah, that works. Okay, that works. Uh, what else have we got? We've got wheels, we've got Rat Pack modules. Uh, what's this? Uh, power coupler uh, for uh, nearby power distribution units. We will come back to that part, I am sure, at some other... Oh, here we go. Uh, press map barometer. So you can take barometer readings, but you can't take atmospheric readings. So um, let's squeeze that in 
there. That's not clipping in. No, so let's clip that in there. So we squeeze that in by the ladder. Uh, that's all so that we can pick up these uh, science experiments without having to leave uh, or east uh, EVA off the ladder. Uh, so uh, what else we got? We've got uh, RPWS antenna, uh, radio and plasma wave instruments for measuring electrostatic and electromagnetic fields generated by planetary magnetospheres. I'm sure we can squeeze that in somewhere. Um, fit that in there. Yeah, that, I think that will be fine. Squeeze that one in. Uh, so we're doing well squeezing them in. What's this? Uh, recycling module, not science experiment. Um, that's the science junior. I've already got any place for the science junior. Bit of a shame. Uh, we do have science hard drives, which have been used for taking copies of experiments. Uh, that could be handy for larger craft. Uh, seismic sensor pod. Um, no, I think we'll skip that one. Uh, what else? Uh, moisture sensor um, probably can, can only be used from low orbit. Um, hmm, a bit too big, I think, so we'll skip that one. Solar particle collector. We might be able to squeeze that in. Let's have a look. How big is that? Hmm. And it does rather expand. So no, I think we'll drop that one. And I think we might be getting... Oh no, I thought we were going to get to the end of our list of experiments. Uh, but we do still have the surface ablation laser, which we can squeeze in. Let's put it down, uh, down here, that way around. Um, there we go. So it's near one of the landing struts and also near this ladder. Yep, we can pick it up uh, while still on that ladder. Uh, what else have we got? Portable lights? Uh, no, I don't think we need portable lights. We'll skip the surface mounted lights, I think. We've probably got enough lighting here. Seismic uh, surface scanning module, scanning for ore. We're not going to be doing any ore experiments, so we will skip over that. Don't need any separators or other similar parts. Let's look like we're actually. Are we actually filtered on science? I don't think we're actually filtered on science. No, there we go. Uh, that's cut down. And then we've got all these uh, universal storage containers for our various science modules. So we could have used those, but um, don't really have a decent place to put the modules. Could have squeezed them in here at the top, I suppose. But um, I think we'll, we'll stick with the individual parts right now. Perhaps we'll do these modules as part of a version 2, a Mark 2 of this craft if we see how to use it. What have we got here? Surface scanner. Oh, we use that on our uh, use that on our mini uh, on our mini vehicle to do now. So we'll take one of those as well. I don't think they're going to survive very well during re-entry. So that could prove to be a little bit of an explosive problem. But nevertheless, I think it'll work. I know there's a little bit of clipping there, so let's move those apart. Doesn't really matter. I'm sure we'll be able to reach them. Let's get those right down. There we go. So I think that's the addition of our various science parts. So this is going to be the Mun Lander Mark 1. Uh, so let's recap. Uh, we've got our uh, Kerber Trail docking port, battery and uh, cupola module. Uh, we have uh, extendable uh, voltaic panels. Those are the uh, six by ones. Uh, we have six parachutes, which might prove um, um, they might prove a little bit insufficient. So I might just add some extra chutes. So let's just do that. What I'm going to do is, can I squeeze in uh, four extra chutes uh, in here without clipping in too much to the various parts? I'm going to put them there. rather clips into those science experiments. So what I could do is place them here and then rotate them around. Let's see how that works. And then push them in a little bit. One, two. Let's 
snapped into the window. So let's bring them out so they're not snapped into the windows. That's not uh, that's not Euclid. I've moved those into completely the wrong place, haven't I? Um, why are they not? Let's go back onto snap reposition. Why didn't they? on to get the snap in place. Is, is that the right snap location? Rotate. Whoops, wrong rotate. Not the right snap location. So let's pick them up again. Is it there? Yeah, that's better. There we go, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Probably needs a little bit of work here. Get on to not snap. I'm not loving this. I'm not loving this. Let's just give it a little bit more. See, it clips into the windows, so. Um, what else could we do? I wonder whether we could place them in here somewhere. Hmm. Should we go without them? Because I can't really put them down here because it would end up with the whole craft flipping over. Um, so the only other option is maybe to squeeze them here into the... Squeeze them up here into the docking port. Maybe move them in. Is that so bad? See them integrated into the docking port? Ah, that's okay. Integrating the docking port. We've got lights in the docking port. Um, that's much better. I feel a bit more comfortable now. We've got uh, six, ten parachutes. Uh, hopefully that'll be enough to slow this craft down as it returns into Kerbin, because that's where we're going to be using the, uh, the parachutes. Uh, we might have to do a powered landing if we use this on Duna. Uh, so let's go back to the recap. We've got uh, the docking port if we need to dock. We have the parachutes, uh, solar panels, uh, control. We have space for two, four, six, eight, nine Kerbals. We have some life support. Uh, we can actually see how long our life support uh, would last. So if we have the maximum crew, we have support life support for 13 days. Uh, and uh, habitation, which is uh, until it gets a bit too messy and broken uh, for anyone to live in it. That's 82 days. That's, that's plenty. Um, but we've only got 13 days worth of food. Uh, so we could try doubling some of these, or we could start using some of this spare areas. Let's use that. Let's go back to life support. Put life back in. <laughs> Put some life back into this craft. Uh, we've got some of these life support packs. Uh, so what I thought we could do then is if we squeeze uh, four in that side uh, and then use the move tool to just slip these into the body like so and then I can slip a set of four more on this side. I know it's clipping at the moment but then we do the same snap uh, the same clipping trick in here. So why don't they look? Oh, what do they do? It needs to come up a little bit. There we go. So it doesn't look the same. Why doesn't it look the same? I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, let's snap these first. And one on there. We'll use the line in the middle of cabin there to line these up. Uh, 
like so. Pull it down just a little bit. And I think we want to go one in. One in. And then we can use the move tool just to unclip them from each other. So that's one left, one right. So there we are. So that should be identically clipped. So how many uh, what life support have we got now? So that's taken us up to 19 days. So that's a pretty good round trip to the Mun, a few minutes on the surface and back again. So uh, that should be fine. And we can always send out some emergency supplies if we get a little bit stuck. Yeah. Now, I don't think we actually have nine Kerbals right now, so this should be plenty of life support. I should point out this is the USI life support, uh, and this is the life support calculator. It also calculates habitation, like I say, which is how long these uh, cabins take to become basically so dirty and in, uh, well, in disrepair that no one can live in them. And you do have to bear that in mind. Uh, the quality of life of the Coppola module is higher than in a lander can, for example. So uh, that does mean your Kerbals will be affected by the quality of their habitation. So moving on, uh, we've looked at our life support. We've looked at our uh, battery life. We've got batteries down here. We have plenty of fuel. Let's make sure that is refueled before we go on to the next step. Uh, we have our landing legs, we have our ladders, and we have all of our science experiments that we're intending to take on what is supposed to be a luxury liner. Um, hmm. A little bit of clipping going on here with our food supplies. So we just move those around a bit. Maybe move that up like so. And move these down. Feel a little more, a little more comfortable about that now. There we go. Still not clipping into the ladder. Uh, so uh, we've got our ladders. Uh, we've got uh, our ladder piece here that will join, hopefully, join these two ladders together. RCS fuel squeezed in here. It's not much RCS fuel, but hopefully we won't need very much to do our docking manoeuvres. Uh, and then down here, as I say, we've got our legs and we've got our little pool engine. Well, that's been quite a uh, fun little build here for our luxury lander to the Mun. Uh, so with that said, I think we will do the rest of our launch and transfer stage in the next episode. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>